I started testing Scrintool about a month ago for writing a book, and this is where I'm at. Now, when I look into Scrindle, you can see I've got a few things going on, but for those unfamiliar, let me show you a little bit around the place. So on the left, we have the sidebar. At the top is my desk. This takes you to, I guess you could call it a homepage, but I never actually use this. So I don't really want to talk about it too much because like I say, it's, it's not a feature that I use that much. And when I click into docs, you can see these are all of the docs that I have inside of my Scrintle. You can see a few of these are edited months ago, well, that's when I first started using Scrintle. But some of these have been updated more recently, obviously a, a few of them a few minutes ago because I've added in the books that I've either acquired or started reading or planned to read. And Atomic Habits is the one that I've been reading the most recently, but for different reasons alongside uh, a couple of other topics, which I'll go over in a second but then we have I'm going to skip over boards for a second we're going to got tags and the reason I've gone to tags is because I don't use tags starred is like the the favorites pane and you can see inside of the boards this is the board icon so if I click on a book it takes me back to the book board and when I click on boards I then have the book board which I was just in but then also the daily notes board which you will have seen in my desk and you can see there is a v1 and that's a legacy board so if I click on here you can see we've got the grids and you've got all the other different bits and bobs that you'd see inside of a board, cards, headings, etc. But if I go to the book board, it looks very different and there's different features available. I think the biggest and most obvious difference is that you can see here I have a I'm highlighting a block. This is inside of one of the docs. You can see docs. This is the research docs. If I click on docs, go to research and click it open. There it is again. So this is like a, a window I can drag around. Even though I'm in the docs browse, I can drag this around to see what's going on. I can come in, edit and see all of the links down at the bottom, links and then boards, etc. But I don't need that up. So we go back to boards, go back to book even. You can see as the mouse goes, it highlights the block. And if I left click and drag, now drop, I've now essentially copied or duplicated this block where I've got a link to the Atomic Habits book into my board. And from here, I can then push enter and then start typing anything. Now, even though it doesn't look like I've done this a lot, I've actually done this quite a lot to map out ideas. So if I left click and open up the Atomic Habits, you can see I've got some points here from the introduction. So what I was doing is I'd have Atomic Habits here, then I would write down the points. Then if I find the point useful, then I would actually put it inside of the page. So it's kind of like I was using the board as a scratch pad to sort of, while I'm reading the book, is this any use, is this any use? And then if it was, click, drag, and then drop it in. It almost acted like a filter for, do I actually want this, yes or no, rather than it just being there and then me having to process it again and say, do I want this highlight? Yes or no? Delete or keep or progressively summarize as you may be familiar with Tiago Forte's work. Do I highlight and then highlight again and highlight again, which as you can see, you can highlight and bold and all the rest of it. But I found this block sort of like moving backwards and forth really useful. As you can see, you can drag it around. And then once I'm done, just highlight and then backspace to delete it all. So I'm going to close that book down now. And you can see what I've got up here is the research doc. And it, it's a heading. This is just the book's heading. Why book's heading is bigger than the research, I'm not entirely sure. I can change the name of the doc here. But those of you familiar with my channel, I'm much more interested in function over aesthetics. You can see I've got the name of a few different books here. I then have a, a dividing line and then a list of another few books. Now, these ones at the top, I'm not actually reading for the content of the book, even though the books are somewhat useful. I've read the books before. I've read uh, all of these except from this one before. Um, but these are about formatting, understanding the, the formatting, sort of reading the book from a writer's perspective rather than a reader's perspective. Hopefully that makes sense. And then these books down here, again, I've read them all before except from the one at the bottom. These are about the content of the book. So I'm reading these ones as a reader and then reading these ones as a writer. Underneath the book section, I then have topics and these are the sort of philosophical, academic topics that I want to be discussing inside of this book that I'm eventually going to write, which if I left click, it then opens up the page. You can see that's the introduction essay that I made on another YouTube channel. I leave a link in the top right for it, but I want to go through that video essay that I made. Again, it's about a textbook that I brought in, um, but I want to put those notes into here so I can reference that in the book. We then got ecological dynamics. Again, we've got the reference to the three books, which are 
uh, in here. There you go, those three, because they're written by the same author, all around ecological dynamics, alongside dynamical systems theory and ecological psychology, because they are the two fields, so I can add those notes in. And then effective practice as a, another doc, which I've only put some headings in here to start with, but these are the three main headings that I feel are going to be used inside of the book in some way. What that looks like yet, again, I'm not sure, because life actually is like time consuming. <laughs> So while I'm reading through these books and, and doing other research in various other fields, uh, I have done this little map to help me understand the, the flow of the books that I'm reading. So How We Learn to Move, Learning to Optimize Movement, and Ecological Coach. These are the three books from Rob Gray, which are content specific. However, Malcolm Gladwell writes a lot of stuff around sports science, sports education, educational science, and the way that he writes the books actually seems to link How We Learn to Move and Ecological Coach quite well together so I've drawn the arrows here to sort of say hey the way that these stories are told might be useful to link some of these ideas because ecological dynamics is rather complex if you're unfamiliar with ecological psychology and dynamical systems theory so I feel like using the stories from outliers may help connect to these two and then the academic referencing and discussion from learning to optimize movement and the ecological coach he may actually be useful to use how James Clear writes atomic habits and structuring and linking these two sort of books together. However, having said that, as you can see down the bottom, Becoming a Sports Coach is what my lecturer, actually my head of course, wrote while I was doing my undergraduate degree. And this book does, it, it says so much about coaching, sports coaching, what it is. It's not just putting codes down on the floor and blowing a whistle and shouting at people. There's psychology, a lot of psychology, a lot of philosophy involved. Um, so I wanted these two books to sort of be next to each other, but they're not quite next to each other because, well, to start with, becoming a sports coach covers a lot more about all of the coaching aspects than from the headings that I've seen inside of this book because I haven't actually read this book yet. But as I drag it down, it's also more, I feel targeted for a wider audience because ecological coach is sort of part of this trilogy which spans skill acquisition or skill development from book one book two to book three so i feel this is more i don't want to say broad reaching because becoming a sports coach is not a like bestseller book by any means but it may appeal to more people than just an ecological coach because ecological requires obviously ecological dynamics background so this book may again, I haven't read it, have a bigger sort of step to actually start reading the book, which again is where Mr. Sports Coaching comes in, because I feel both of these are accessible to most sports coaches that are interested in learning science. And this is actually where I'm at right now with my current thinking, as you can see, format, question, question, the courage to be disliked, because I like talking to myself. For those of you that have watched the channel for a while, you may have seen videos in the past where I talk to myself. I'll leave a link to one of them in the top right. And I find it really useful in reflection to talk to myself and, and argue with myself, whether it's a lecturer and a student or a coach and a different coach or an experienced and non-experienced or familiar with the sport, unfamiliar with the sport or wh whatever it happens to be. I take two different approaches and I try and argue with myself from as many sides as I can. The Courage to be Disliked is a book that I was recommended by a friend of mine that said, well, actually this book is written as a conversation between a student and professor. So maybe read the book and have a look about the format. So it's in there as a format and you can see the flow of the board goes from how we learn to move down the page to this format which we may turn, which I may <laughs> turn into a script, but I'm, I'm still working on that with obviously all the other books to go through as well and the other topics that I want to bring in in some way, but how I do that yet. I'm unsure. And something I should probably mention is all of these are actually the doc themselves. So if I click on it and then go to snippet, it actually shows the doc. I don't have anything in them at the moment. No, it would show the full. Um, so if I was to, let's go over to Ecological Coach, open that up and say, uh, this book is to be read. I know I need to read the book. You can see now if I come down to Ecological Coach and then do snippet, it actually shows the book. So if I want to have a quick look or put some notes, what I'll probably do is add the notes at the top. So if I go and open the snippet, double click, it then opens it up and then say this is the summary of the book actually if I drag this over you can see that I'm actually like live here because screen tool is shareable I can share it with other people which I may do in the future with some of the drafts but again still working this out and so I can add more text here and you can see things change until they fall off the card which should happen soon. 
And you can see now it's sort of faded away. So if I close this out, now the card is faded. I can go to the compact. So I've just got the title. I can go to snippet and I've got a snippet and then I go full and then I can see everything that's going on in the card. And for those curious, what happened to Obsidian? I'm still using Obsidian to do a lot of my writing and a lot of the planning and everything else really that's going on with the book. But I am experimenting with Scrintle instead of the Obsidian canvas because there are features in Scrintle, as I've just shown, that aren't in Obsidian canvas or they are, but it's not as flexible as I would like it to be yet.